<laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of the Inspired Evolution. We have with us Don Jose Ruiz, an absolute brother who's basically here to help people awaken to the artist that's within them, right? And our greatest art, according to him, is the life that we live, right? And that's the Toltec way. This medicine, this medicine, this episode is all about connecting to the medicine within you, right? And it takes some real inner work, right? Getting really honest with yourself, understanding that you actually are inherently kind and everything that every time you're acting out in like against the kindness that's within you, you're actually acting out against yourself. One of my favorite tools from this podcast is if I do good, I feel good, right? If I do bad, I feel bad. This is an episode where there is just inspiration and wisdom, line after line, line after line, minute after minute. Don Jose is such a beautiful brother and here to basically connect us back to spirit so that we can live a life in alignment with of our heart, you know, rather than what he calls this domestication that we face in society these days, bringing everybody back to the heart so we can live our highest truth, our fullest expansion. So hopefully this episode supports you on your journey. As always, stay inspired, keep evolving. If you're loving this episode, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you in the episode. Big love, y'all. Welcome to the Inspired Evolution, and it is an absolute treat to be here today. We have with us Don Jose Ruiz. How are we, sir? Very good, brother. Very happy to be here this morning, and all my love and gratitude. <laughs> It is such a blessing and a treasure to have you here. For those choosing into Don, uh, tuning into Don Jose for the first time, he is an international best-selling author. The Wisdom of the Shamans, The Fifth Agreement, The Medicine Bag, and he recently wrote Shamanic Power Animals. As a Toltec master of transformation in modern-day shamanism, he has dedicated his life to sharing the wisdom of the ancient Toltec through his books lectures and journeys to sacred sites all around the world brother it is our privilege to have you here sharing your wisdom with us here today thank you so much for doing this oh thank you so grateful and honored to be with you <laughs> so just tuning in like one of my favorite things going through your work was realizing you know okay so the four agreements and the fifth agreement are an absolute you know powerhouse of wisdom in there and i love it and i loved in the fifth agreement how you brought us home to actually finding your own agreements as well and that was a big deal but one of the things I wanted to tune into is let's start early days. What does it really mean to be Toltec and be the artist of our own life? It means that we live in a world where everything is possible. When you begin stepping into the infinite, that's where dreams are born, my grandmother always says. So when you just imagine it, now it's up to you to manifest it, to give it birth. We all have the body of divine earth, of mother, and the mother mm -hmm. earth is a dream of creation. So we're here to create. So the word Toltec means artists, artists of the spirit. So we're just here to share the wisdom to all the little ones because it's not what we tell them, it's how we live our life. Mm. And to and in a certain time, you know, we, teach, we train the little ones about all the experiences of the wisdom. But yet again, the dream of the planet is waiting for them. You know, life, everyday life, you know, junior high, high school, and everything that goes on into that world that begins to also domesticate them. So mm -hmm. we give them the advice so they can realize in the future when they get inside of a world and then with all these tools, they awake inside that world. They know that they're dreaming. And that's why I say in living in the Toltec path is that a world that everything is magic because we're at service to Mother Earth. But before we can get there, we have to remove all these thoughts and be at service to the love of our life, which is ourselves. <laughs> I love that. It's so succinctly put and it's there's so much in there to unpack as well. And I love the I love that you brought up the um yeah, just you know, the, the future generations. I uh literally became a father for the first time uh a week ago. And congratulations. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. It's been uh wow, it's it's such a journey. It has been such an incredible miracle. And uh yeah, just witnessing the creative creativity of spirit, you know, is is just it's next level. Um, and yeah, just feeling into that, like there is so much, um, you know, the, the, this nuance that you said of, you know, there is so much that we think we need to do 
to sort of encourage the next generation and teach. But really, like what I've come to learn is that we model, they model our behavior and who we are and how we walk in this world. Um, does, does it like, how does that play out in your life? Like, is there so much responsibility? Because I know responsibility can be quite a bit, can, can be quite like stifling for some people. It's like, okay, I'm not just doing this for me, but I'm doing this for my community. But for some people, it's expansive. And what's your relationship with the medicine that you're carrying and like the influence that it has on others? Well, it's about carrying the torch that the elders pass to us. And that's the torch of the wisdom, mm. the wisdom of kindness. And in order to remain kind to ourselves and kind to others among the world that is very unkind, that is the wisdom of love. And that is what we talk about. It's not necessarily the teachings or the metaphors or, or the scriptures. No, it's about how we treat ourselves in life and how we treat others in life. So when we begin living this way, this is the totic way of life. This is when artists respect other artists. Like in this world, Everybody's competing. They, they lost respect for other artists. They have to put on other artists down so they can feel superior. Then we can feel the dream of less than by suppressing ourselves. So when we know that we are just life, we witness the world passing by. But to keep the kindness is how we can walk in the world to not take anything personal because people do not know what they're doing. Sometimes they're just acting in uh, experiences that they had. Like some people can be screaming at, at us in we're sitting in a table, they can come screaming at us very negative. But before we judge them, you no, know, everybody goes through something. So what made that person go into that? Mm. It's an infection of suffering. And we can see everybody's unkind to themselves, you know, but when we get the kindness fire that, that I'm talking about, it's a way of living. So it's not really, you know, something that we have to train for. It's something that we are, and we're just natural lovers of life. We're love. So how can we go searching for love outside when we are love? And love make us the understanding that our nature is to be kind. Mm. And so, but I still find that some people, thank you so much for sharing that. I feel like sometimes it, even if we send the, set the intention to be kind and we find that we are inherently kind, there are triggers in the world out there that sort of set us or derail us from our path. Um, I'm speaking from experience, having set the intention for kindness at times and still finding myself frustrated um, in certain ways, or, you know, like finding that I had an expectation and it didn't get met. And then, you know, it's like, oh, and then I, I start to close down again, rather than open up and trust. Um, yeah. Any advice for that? Well, the thing is that we are feeling, we're a vehicle that just feels, mm -hmm. and that's how we create and coexist. And we have, that's how we talk to our body. So there come a moment in our life where we have found, you know, the unconditional love coming and feel the pregnant magnitudes that comes from us like my good friend likes to sing those words but mm -hmm. set the goal when we're feeling this open what happens oh this cannot be good there has to be something down and the little judging suppression that i was talking earlier how we suppress mm -hmm. divine mother early is how we suppress ourselves from being that's why the powerful teaching that i love is when say you know i don't believe you i say that to myself you cannot do it jose why even go for there? You're going to be a bad parent. You're going to be a bad grandparent. You're going to be a bad speaker. I don't believe you. And mm. when we break that curse, it's because we didn't put it there. It was a domestication that someone gave to us so we can live their dream instead of our dream. So the derailing it is to suppress us, to make us feel less than, and then we adapt whatever is good for us. But when we wake up knowing, you know, that we have to protect ourselves from ourselves. That's mm. it. There's no other feeling outside. So when you feel like you're, you know, going against yourself, it's because you're going against yourself. And, you know, that's the day of celebration because, and that's the Toltec path, because in the Toltec path, there's nothing to learn, but unlearn what takes the inspiration away from the artist. Mm. I love that. And how do we get out of our own way again and again? Like I can hear you say there's patterns there that, you know, I don't believe you, um, or you can disrupt your own, uh, yeah, your own disbelief, like your own belief, and there's disbeliefs in yourself. Um, what is the path that, you know, one can take to sort of really connect to the medicine that's within them? Walking the path of honesty. Mm. When we walk the path of honesty, we're not lying to the society. We're not lying to ourselves. We surrender. And we will surrender is that life will take us. And before life will take us to be one with the energy that is in everything, we will enjoy the gift that we have. Mm. And this is honesty. If I'm having a bad day, I say to my honey, 
I'm feeling a little irritated and having a, a bad day. I have to control my emotional poison. Mm. Those words of honesty, instead of a person with ego, I will deal with my honesty. I don't have triggers. No, the body mm-hmm. does what it does. And we cannot suppress the body from doing what it does. Like we don't cannot, it's so cruel to suppress a puppy from being a puppy mm. just because it's not a, acting like a human. It's mm. cruel. And but the same thing we ask for our own body. This is our pet. This is, you know, this is our the love of our life. This is the ones that carry us. So when we begin noticing that we're hurting it from here, is awareness okay? First, it's gonna be uncomfortable, like yoga. You know, when we get there, we cannot do those crazy poses right away. It takes yeah. time, but little by little, <laughs> we get comfortable in the discomfort. We breathe in. Mm. And the more we breathe in, it's like the drill going inside to plant a seed inside of ourselves. And the power of honesty will always let us know if we are in integrity that creates the intent to create this dream in this life, because that's where we talk from the heart and when we believe ourselves, or we use it against ourselves because that's what the word can do. So with the awareness, being honest, yes, I feel like this. And then we discover the first rule of the art of happiness. And it is that we're not happy all the time. <laughs> Wait, that's powerful. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. It's um yeah, I I actually one of my biggest challenges in life personally was that I struggled with um with depression for quite some time. Um and this is quite a while ago. And I remember when I got some help supported around it, it was actually this was exactly the key thing. She said, You're not honest. And that was the thread that she uh, the lady that I was seeing pulled at and she said, if you could embrace honesty your life will change. And uh, that was the first time I realized that I could actually choose my operating system, you know? Um, And it wasn't easy. It wasn't like overnight, all of a sudden, it was just like, yeah, you know, I'm going to be honest. It was like, okay, I'm going to be honest. And then I could, I was just more present to how dishonest I was at times. And then slowly by slowly being more and more present to it, almost like rubbing the cat the wrong way, you know, eventually it's like, oh, I can see that that's rubbing the cat the wrong way. And then I started walking the path of honesty. And from there, it, it is, it is hard. Like I hear you talking about honesty. I hear you talking about kindness. And one of the things that has been present for me, and we had um, a beautiful sister on Marianne Williamson, she ran for presidency mm-hmm. in the United States. And she, she said, um, yeah, you've got a wage piece. You know, it's, you know, like peace is, uh, yeah, you've got to actually get behind it just because like there's people out there that are waging war the same way you've got to wage peace. And sometimes it's becoming more and more present for me that these, these internal, like, you know, following your path of honesty, following, you know, your, your, your desires for kindness. um, It, it's not as like, it is your innate nature, but there's so much domestication as you put it, that we go through that it can be quite challenging um, to actually be present and to fight for your innate self. Yes, because it's the battle of survival. Some mm. people lose themselves in the brink of war. Some people lose themselves in battle that they begin fighting their own brothers and sisters. They begin mm. so paranoia. They begin so untrustworthy is the word. They don't trust the outside. Why? Because they don't trust themselves. The moment that you begin trusting yourself, you begin walking your talk with your self-honesty, it's like you have a land and then you go to somebody else's presence and it's like you're rolling on a boat carrying mm. offerings of your land to mm. these people mm. and many people dream differently many people dream differently but in behind it all there's always going to be truth and lies and love and hate that creates mm. by the lies and the truth and believing in the lies is the foundation of hell because it's, it, it's a fear that we're going to lose Mm. When we already have gained, the mm. energy that we really are is that, you know, imagine this beautiful dream that we are. We're this energy and all of us have our own individual cell phones. Mm. That if we get those cell phones and we put them together in one home and there's 20 cell phones, all of them will be different because everything that the person absorbs. So those are an extension of the human brains. Mm. But, but at the same time, anything inside in the phone is not real. What's mm. real is what's giving it life to that phone, and that's the energy. Mm. So imagine all the beautiful worlds that we're connecting telepathically. We're commuting on the phone and the internet like we're doing right now. You know, distance, we have control it to deliver a message. But that comes the place. What message are we going to give from our land? What is the message from the heart that we're going to give to ourselves and to the people we love? And mm. that becomes 
it grows itself like fire mm. because your world is your world and their world is the world. And that's been the distraction. We lose ourselves in battle. And when we surrender, we know that there's nothing to battle. Mm. Brother, I find more and more of this conversation around the impetus for us as a collective to make a change individually within ourselves so that the collective can go through a shift. Um, and sometimes I do wonder if it's just me <laughs> that is more exposed to people such as yourself um, walking a certain path or whether there are collectively more and more people walking this path by my side. Um, I often like to think of myself as the dead weight, <laughs> like I'm the last one to change. If I've changed, the rest of the world has changed. I've just got to do the work so I can hurry up and, and support the world and getting where it's already going. Uh, that's what keeps my, my fire burning. Um, but I, yeah, I do wonder, do you find, I know you travel quite a bit doing this work around the world, the receptivity um, to yeah, finding a new a new program and like a more of an like an openness, um, the resurgence of you know bringing through this um, ancient wisdom which supports us to live life just as fundamental humans, <laughs> right? It's almost like we've we've shed our humanity in some way. Um, do you feel like there is a, a reawakening to some degree happening right now towards some of these, or has that always been the process that we're involved in, and it's just it's it's now it's just another time. Well, that's the beautiful thing about awareness. We wake up to the dream that's original. Like the original message from the Buddha, from the Toltecs, from the Egypt, from Christianity has always been the original message. And it's been against the suffering in a beautiful artistic way of being. Because in reality, we all work for the same boss. So when we get awareness that we're living in a nightmare in hell, something in us wakes up and that's the kindness and harmony that wants to retake what is naturally theirs, the principal right to live. So we all work for the same boss. No matter what we do and we overcome ourselves, we work for the same boss. And this is something magical that begins happening. When we travel around the world, we can turn around to a brother or a sister. We look into their eyes and we automatically know that we know each other for years. Or we can know each other from a past life we believe in stories. But you know, there's a connection there because it's the energy that operates in the same direction of intent. Beyond the story, beyond the words, beyond how it gets there, it activates the faith that is behind the word. So when we get together, we know that we're working for the same boss. And one of the beautiful things that I experienced, my grandmother, like more than 11 years ago before she passed away, she said that divine mother will return and she will not return physically, but her energy will be everywhere. And it will be not in spirituality what you expect. That's all she said. She passed away. Now, a few years later, when I was praying for her medicine to come, you know, cause she used to do healings on me. Mm. I walk into a, a supermarket and I see this juice place. They make juices. And in those juices, they have like 30 or 20 juices. And they have all the ingredients that she used in her center of herbs to heal people. But now they're in the supermarket. And then I got more into that dream and I see it everywhere. And it's the tradition of the old grandmothers or curanderas or wicas or whatever mm. tradition of divine mothers they used to heal with medicines. It's everywhere in the world. You know, mm. you go into the political world, you see the, the power of Divine Mother rising up again. Femininity mm. is rising. You know, genders, now we're seeing it just as life. When they ask me, what gender am I? How do I describe myself? I go, I'm just life, you know? Mm. Forget whatever it is, because love, it is love. So the beautiful thing about Divine Mother is that it's coming up. And the beautiful thing about it is that people are being kind to themselves. They're stop mm. being harder themselves. So that energy has completely woken up. And in Totihuacan, the last time I was there, like a month and a half ago, it was the eclipse. At the same time, it was the full moon. And the celebration of the calendar, it is the snake time, which is the beginning of the sixth humanity. Uh -huh. And the sixth humanity is the, it's not that we are different humans at the beginning of time. No, we're the same. But our consciousness level, because of the light that is coming to this earth, will completely change. Now look at the speed of light that, you know, that we can operate by giving a message of, inspiration it can go from you know from americas to australia you know from all the mm. world can be connected in seconds mm. <laughs> totally i love that and the thing that yeah when when i pause to reflect and sometimes i get too deep into the rabbit hole with this but i'm sure we can go there is the dreaming and the prayers that our our grandmothers would have had for you know for the the world's healing 
you know, they carry this prayer for healing the world. And it's, it's such a, it's such an ambitious prayer. <laughs> it's such an audacious prayer. Um, it's so selfless. Yeah. And the magnitude of it, but the presence of wisdom that must've been present for someone to pray for something like that and bless our grandmother's yeah. son, such, such, yeah. such, oh, just everything. Right. Um, but in the, when you start witnessing, like you shared, the dreams and prayers in their own unique, subtle way, yet potent way, becoming alive and reality, you know, what does that do for you yourself when it starts to bleed into, oh, my dreams, you know, may not come true in my lifetime, but every time I'm, I'm dreaming and I'm, I'm, I'm setting a prayer, I'm setting out a frequency and the ripple will be received somewhere in the fabric of the world. Yes, it's a beautiful path of inspiration. And that's the artist's path. The artist will never know what he's going to create. And if give him something to create, he will not be connected to the sun because in the tradition that I come from, I always imagine that, you know, how babies have a tentacle core with they were born, but they mm. cut it in life. We, our soul, our spirit, our energy, it's so immense that it never gets cut. We can connect to that way of living. And mm. when we begin connecting to that way of living, we can completely see that everything is just a beautiful dream. And I must, I say it humbly and majestically, the most amazing dream that I've witnessed in this life, if I, if I had a conversation somewhere else after I leave the body, it was, mm. see, how humanity created the dream of words, that, that cre created the dream of stories, that created mm. the dream of belief. It is like life woke up in itself and started being so magical that it created itself. And this is, the way that we have is humanity and we take mm. it for granted. This is why grandmother always says, we live in a world of magic. We can create whatever we want. We can create divine magic or negative magic. But the thing is, when we believe in ourselves, that is powerful, but we believe someone better than someone else, you know, that is ego. And that's what separates the world. So I love that we are in this unity of waking up in these times because, you know, what else is there to do? But when we realize, that life is a vacation and that we can see and play with words that we don't have to take things so personally when it happens. It's like my father got interviewed the other day, well, a few months ago. <laughs> if, if they say, someone asked him with, you know, some, some energy, you know, say, how can you not take things personal? No, what do you take personal? They go, well, nothing much, nothing much. You know, he goes, how about this man who, know, who ran for the election and, and say bad things about your people? He goes, why should I take him personal? Well, he said bad things about your personal. And then he gave this answer that I always love. He goes, mm. why should I take something that I know is not truth personal? And when he said that word, why would I react or take something personal that I know is not truth personal? That is the same thing that's happening around the world. People mm. are doing negative things. And, you know, and the thing right away is to blind us. But, you know, when we become aware and calm and wise, we see how the dream is operating and so with negativity. Okay, this is already something that is being done. How are we going to stop this? By the next generations, by waking mm -hmm. them up, not fighting them, not reacting to them, because then we can see ourselves losing in battle. And, you know, in the dream, they talk about warriors, but the warriors, they die in a battlefield, my grandmother said. When you make peace with yourself, you witness the whole dream, and then you become like a honeycomb and the beast will come to you and your message will go because it's a reflection. It's not really your message. It's the light that's awakening in everything. And that's what I feel, you know, what we're doing right now, like you and me and other people, brothers and sisters in the world, we're following our hearts. But yet again, we're the instrument from the symphony of divine love. Mm. And our gift is just to the our instrument to be played and to mm. feel blessed that that energy is coming to us. And one day I picked up a book and it was the self-realization that I ever had the most purest. And it was by Christopher Reeve, the actor who played Superman, who felt paralyzation, you know, lost himself, got anger, hated God, but then saw others like him. He began seeing himself in others. So he began helping them, healing them. He began healing, you know, but he died. But he mm -hmm. died in peace, loving God. But when he wrote his book called Nothing is Impossible, and that's when I needed it at the time. It was mm. my father was in coma. So uh. when I opened the book, it was a page that said, 
if I do good, I feel good. And if I do bad, I feel bad. And that's my religion, Abraham Lincoln. Those words always stick to me because it said to me, we, the parasite mind always wants to make it complicated to find something that proves that we're not right in our heart. But we make it simple. We don't even need to advertise it. And it's being done. And that's the magic that all of us have. That's why I love your show and your message because it's about inspiration. Because I also believe if I can do my transformation and let me be grateful to be alive again, also, you know, this is the thing about waking up. We begin mm. waking up and no matter about what things we did in the past, it's done. Mm. By living in forgiveness, it's not for the people and for the people to forgive us. They have the right to do so in their own time. But it's for us to not repeat those things again to corrupt what? Our altar and garden, mm. our home. <laughs> yeah. Which is this? <laughs> I love that, and I love that is so powerful, and it's so simple. I, it always gets me how wisdom is always just the simple. The simpler it is, the the truer it lands. You know, it's if uh, if I do good, I feel good. If I do bad, I feel bad. Mm. And, and you know, brother, we all know this. Yeah, but we're not honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's the, mm -hmm. but if we're honest with ourselves, like we were talking earlier. Damn, there it is. That was the talk. <laughs> and it will be okay. Take your medicine, mm -hmm. your own medicine, your own mm -hmm. advice, your own wisdom, your own self-realizations. And that is the light that people talk about. It's not that there's a flashlight or a light from outer space shining our path. No, our light mm -hmm. is just a metaphor. Say, I got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, brother, I wanted to ask you a question in regards to family. And what it, and I know, um, touch wood, you know, your grandmother, your father, yourself, your brother, all beautiful brothers, you know, get, and, and sisters carrying um, just so, so many prayers for like, and carrying your wisdom of being what it means to be Toltec and sharing that medicine with the world. Um, I guess, what does family mean to you? And just some of the nuances between how you feel we come to like family chooses each other or how we come together as family and, and the importance of family at this time and in this life. It's a circle of kindness and harmony and respect. Mm. It's like when you see somebody and you feel in your heart, you channel the puppy energy and you begin wiggling your tail <laughs> and begin feeling that happiness and you don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to hide yourself, wear a mask. You can mm. talk like you talk. You can mm. be you. That is what family it is. It not necessarily has to be a bloodline. No, it's the one who set you who you are and teach you. And yet we have people who are a bloodline who sometimes are negative. Sometimes they are very stubborn. Sometimes mm. they pick fights because they have no awareness. But yet again, having the awareness of where they're at, you know, is their life they're living. It's not, mm. it's not about putting them down. It's because they have respect for their people's art and life. They have to choose whatever they kind of life they're choosing because their mistakes or their actions in life is not that I'm doing them. So I'm not the one who's going to feel guilty and shame for doing it. But yet again, I love them so much that I'll be there for them because that's my decision. But if somebody begins hurting me and I'm there for them, there's nothing to prove. My whole devotion, it is me. Mm. Like you now, you in life, you will know that your life will completely change and your awareness will completely change because now your whole dedication is to your little one. A new dream has been born for you. So when that is born, you can let everything that does not serve your little one because you want the best for the little one. Mm -hmm. And this is the dream about maturing because we open up with wisdom to enjoy really this life. Now the beautiful thing is just to receive the gift of life. And every time you see the little one's eyes, you know, say, the heart you know <laughs> worthless <laughs> yeah it expands beyond beyond measure beyond measure yeah thank and you. that's what we truly are mm. that's what we truly are that's mm. a divine moment that's a divine moment with divinity mm. thank you so much for sharing that mm. and so in your travels around the world um you've met a whole bunch of different people speaking to a whole bunch of different uh, been to a whole different you know lots of different forums. Um, do you find again and again that there is a particular type of um, person that is gravitating towards this work more than others? Are some people more primed than others to the artist's way? Are there certain people that are like 
more ready to awaken or is everybody kind of on this journey at the moment coming towards the artist's way? What do you feel? What is your feeling? Um, because I know everybody's you've been very thinking, well received. Yeah, go on. Yes, yeah. everybody's taking care of their garden. Mm. Every organ is taking care of their part of their body. Mm. It's like everybody won't believe who has good intent and kindness are sharing that with their people. So we're all working for the same boss. So if there's a garden of cactus, it's because it cannot touch the garden of roses. Mm. But the cactus is doing its job. Mm. And, the, and the lotus is doing its job. So in this world, it's not about the word of the gods, you know, which God is more powerful, which truly is powerful. No, because all of that is just created words and stories and metaphors and philosophies. The intent behind all that is what's behind that. And this is the interesting part that we become obsessed or fanatical and give our power away. And many people begin channeling other people because they don't believe in their own power in their own heart <laughs> because we are the energy. So of course, let's say if we are all the energy in an ocean mm. and let's say all the individuals who have ever lived and will live are in the ocean, we're the same. Mm. And by the inspiration, we can tap into somebody just like I was watching the other day, someone who got so inspired by Jimi Hendrix. And this is like 40 years later, that got inspired and got in the guitar and people say, oh, it's the spirit of Jimi Hendrix, but it's not the spirit of Jimi Hendrix, it's someone who got inspired. Mm. And the same goes with religion, spiritual people, spiritual masters, you know, musicians, actors, scripts. And that's why sometimes we think of something in this dream and another one picks it because the power of, of intent coming through us. One of my favorite things about manifestation and intent and inspiration coming through is uh, one time with Michael Jackson, and Prince, mm. you know, they had a whole competitive moment, <laughs> but they were both helping the world. But in their own worlds, they had a competitiveness that only exists in their heads, you know, yeah, because it yeah. was not real because the, both of them were helping the world. As mm. you can see, the music that they left behind, they touched. Mm. But one time, mm. Michael Jackson woke up around two or three in the morning mm. and woke up with this engineer says, hey, you got to get in the engineer, push record because I'm ready to hit the song. Well, Michael, it's two, three in the morning. Yes, I just got this message from God. But Michael, God doesn't rest and you need your rest. I know God doesn't rest. I just need to record it. But why so important, Michael? And Michael paused and says, it's because if we don't do it right now, Prince might be getting it right now. If he can beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that we're all open channels. If we mm. take the action, it's a privilege. It's not that I did it first or I did it. No, it's that we get a call from our, if, if we're devoted, Let's say our Swami gave us a, a, a mission. Mm. Thank you, Swami, for believing in me. I will do it. Mm. I love that. Our connection to that channel, our connection to that source, our connection to that openness. How do we, how do we cultivate that connection? Is it... Just be present. Mm. Be present. That's why honesty is so powerful too. Because you realize that you are a lie and you don't have to wait for that moment. When I'm talking about right here, you don't have to wait for the moment to go blind, have a death experience, lose something big in your life. You don't have to wait for something that dramatic and painful mm. to wake up to enjoy life. Mm. It's just a matter of just making a decision and will against temptation because you are learning to be what everybody taught you and domesticated how to be. Now it's time to break down that temple and rebuild it with your heart whatever gives you pleasure and enjoy the rest of your life. Like mm. I'm now 43, I'll be 43 in September. So I got a good 30 years to do everything that I was afraid to do before that awareness hit home and to go through that emotional brother, to go through mm. all those butterflies mm. and to feel alive, to overcome it. Mm. It feels so good. Like sometimes, you know, I go into boxing training with my sensei and my partner. Mm. She teaches us. So, so one day I I I I uh, I, I, go, I don't want to go today. I don't want to go today. Mm. I don't want to go today. And but I go anyways. Mm. But after that hour, and it's just one hour, I feel so good. Yeah. I feel so alive. And that's the same thing for anything we want to create. At the first, we're gonna feel the butterflies. We're gonna see our mm. own, you know, depressing things or negative things or own blocks. But then we begin skeptical of our own negativity. We begin mm. being skeptical of ourselves. And this is what the description for me, the art, when Jesus talks to the snake, mm. is his own snake because it's crippling. Uh. He's his own demon. He's talking to his own negativity. 
And this is the fifth agreement to be skeptical of our own negativity and control our emotional pushing because we do have poison. And mm -hmm. that's the first honesty. And that's why I love the rattlesnake so much because when it's young, he cannot control his poison. He can bite you and give you a whole dosage of 20, 30 rattlesnakes. But when he matures, he knows the perfect dose to give. And mm -hmm. we human, when we are honest with ourselves, that's controlling poison, mm -hmm. emotional poison, mm -hmm. that it will hit us first and then it will hit the people that we love and then we'll go begging for forgiveness and then we'll be begging for forgiveness. Then we're susceptible for guilt and shame to sacrifice the way that we live our life. Mm. And then from there, if we disrupt that pattern, then we can actually start to move forward and then you can actually show up and then you end up feeling good after the after showing up for something that you uh, you initially didn't even want to attend. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's what I like to say. When you wake up, you cannot go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Brother, there is so much um, that I could ask about story. And I know that, you know, just the way, like for, for in the West, potentially it's something that, you know, is, is coming alive, you know, this conversation around storytelling. And I see it <coughs> happening a little bit in like, you know, corporate environments. It's like, you know what, storytelling and the power of storytelling to create influence and change or, you know, and it's, it's a bit more, um, I don't know, it's put in a box and it's got a little bow on it when it's in that environment. Um, but when I feel into the depth of presence of what story really means to a culture <clears throat> such as yours, such as uh, my heritage is Indian. And, you know, there's some like, like ancient, ancient stories in there. And um, yeah, I, I find some of the stories fascinating. Uh, one of the books, actually, one of the stories like the, the Mahabharata, there's different characters and they all carry a different energy and all of them are divine. But as you mentioned, like, you know, every, we all have our, like a, a little bit of poison in it, right? So every blessing has with it, you know, somewhat of a curse. And it's not because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge. It's just, you can't have, it's, it's the duality of it, right? Like there's a light this way. So there must be a shadow here. And there's a light this way, and there must be a shadow here. And all these characters play out this story and you start to really witness the light of each of the characters and then how the shadows interface with each of the characters, you know? Um, and it's really, really, really epic to just feel into how much can be taught and how much can be learned through story with each other. Yes. And it's a total, total way of life um, for someone such as yourself. And I know that, you know, I, yeah, I, I honestly don't even know where to begin asking questions about storytelling, but I would love to sort of feel into, you know, the essence of storytelling and the power of story and just what that means to you. And storytelling is teaching with respect. Mm. Because let's say we give, or the teacher gives a whole teaching with a story. Mm. And then whoever's going through a situation, they can fit into the character of the story and have a self epitome mm. without having to go into the self one on one conversation to get it out of you and to mm. so realize no, the story has the power to not point the fingers and to judge. Like one day I was remembering, I was in Rishikesh in one of the top mountains, you know, where, where, where Lord Shiva temple was first had the experience of, of, the, of the poison. Mm. And I remember I was going through poison in my head and something was happening in my life and I was believing my story. Mm. And then I, the story that my brother, stepbrother who goes a lot to India, before, and he told the story about Krishna. And then when they said Shiva got the poison, but he didn't, he put it in his mouth, but didn't swallow. Mm. And that's what I was feeling in that moment. That story that he was sharing, mm. I saying, okay, I created poison and I have it in mind, but mm. I have right now the choice if I want to swallow it or not. Mm. And swallow it is to believe it. So in that moment, <sighs> the fifth agreement that I saw be skeptical of your own negativity, I saw it being played in a whole different, you know, world of mind, but it's the same connecting because it's the same path. Mm. from the time thank you so much for sharing that that is so potent and you know i find that sometimes on my own journey my own path again and again that somehow like depending on what the character that we are put into the story of life it seems sometimes that we're here to learn the same lessons again and again and again because i know it can be frustrating as like just because i coach people and i sometimes find that you know, it's like, oh, I thought I'd already completed this body of work, <laughs> you know, like I thought I knew not to swallow the, uh, swallow the poison or, you know, like, and it's like, I knew not to believe, you know, like myself. And it's like, and then the lesson comes again. <laughs> and then the lesson comes again. It's like, 
man, I thought I was done. I thought I learned that lesson. <laughs> like, I have to learn again. <laughs> but um, sometimes it makes me feel like um, that, you know, we chose to learn a particular set of lessons in this particular lifetime or this character plays a particular role that has that frequency. Um, do you find that in your own journey or am I just uh, slow to learn? <laughs> no, it, it, it's true. It, it, it comes with the awareness, you know. You can say to somebody, hey, you can have two types of gardens. One is a garden full of life, grass and, and plants everywhere. The only thing is that you have to water them. You have to give some of your energy that you begin unity them. Plus you can have that or you can have a plastic garden. You don't have to water it. You cannot connect with it. It's made of plastic. You have to change it every six years which or 10 years. But what, what garden do you want? A plastic mm -hmm. garden that is artificial or a real garden that you have to work in and put yourself into it? Get your hands in the dirt so you can take care of it and protect mm -hmm. it from species that want to destroy it. Mm -hmm. And this is the beautiful thing when that becomes a reflection of our own home. So, mm -hmm. of course, I went to decide. I want the one with, with good. <laughs> with the, the real garden. <laughs> the real garden. The the and real this is just a metaphor, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Oh, brother, thank you so much for sharing no, yourself no. so abundantly in your wisdom here today. It has been such a pleasure. It has been such a treat to connect with you. And, uh, and yeah, just sharing the ability, of, you know, uh, for us to really be able to follow our inspirations and follow our heart um, and just embrace that expanded self and to stay connected to our spirit, our source, our light, our guidance. Um, and I know that, you know, this conversation has been impactful for those tuning into it, but I'm also aware that it's a lifetime of work that you've put into yourself to be able to bring this conversation to us here today. So thank you so much oh, for, thank you. for this conversation and the work that you do. And on behalf of myself and the Inspired Evolution Tribe here in Australia and all around the world, wishing you all the best on your journeys going forward. I will put a link to all your books um, in the show notes here as well for those that want to check it out. Um, yeah, yeah, some really, really potent work there. Cannot advocate it highly enough. Um, yeah, thank you so much for doing this again, brother. Oh, thank you, brother. Thank you for your invitation. All my love and gratitude. I'm so honored and grateful for everything that you do. We work for the same boss, and I'm so happy <laughs> that one day can go and visit you in your land and give you a big hug. <laughs> It'll be such a blessing. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, leave us a comment. And if you want to stay in tune for new episodes launching every Monday, hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Stay inspired to evolve. Yeah,